short film is a call to action from the wildlife trusts. Right now we have a unique opportunity to protect the UK's marine wildlife, but we need your help. But what's worth protecting out there? And what's special about the seas nearest to where you live? Nothing, you might think. But in fact, everywhere in UK seas, there's a range of interesting things to see. There are entire hidden landscapes down there, sand dunes and mountains and caves, places with intriguing names, the Loon Deep, the Brackersham Balls and the Dogger Bank, mysterious places just begging to be explored. And if you were to look more closely at this incredible undersea landscape, you'd see that it's like a patchwork quilt. Some places are mud, others are sand or gravel or rock. And each different type of seabed has a different community of plants and animals living in it. So wherever you go in the UK's seas, there are interesting places to see and wildlife that needs protection. Let's take a look now at some of the wildlife that lives in the seas around the UK and then move on to this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to protect it and how you can get involved. You might think that muddy places would be the least inspiring bits of our seas, but mud has its virtues. While granted it's not as colourful as some places beneath our seas, it is packed with sea life, though much of it is hiding, buried in the ooze. But in terms of the sheer copious volume of life here, it's on a par with rainforests and coral reefs. One of the more striking animals found on muddy and stony habitats in many parts of the UK is the candy-striped flatworm, which glides along so smoothly, so gracefully, you'd never guess that underneath, thousands of tiny hairs are flicking back and forward to push it along. The mantis shrimp, named for its likeness to the praying mantis, is found in just a handful of muddy places off southern England and North Wales. It's a predator with lightning responses, which jabs its arms like spears to impale its prey. The shrimp's lunge is one of the fastest movements in the entire animal kingdom, striking a blow as powerful as a bullet. Sandy places on the seafloor around the UK are home to some of the most endearing and enigmatic creatures you will ever come across. You'll also find some very impressive camouflage and some nifty burying techniques. is a property expert. Lacking a hard shell of its own, it lives inside an abandoned snail shell, curling its spiral-shaped abdomen into the shell to hold it in place. But as it grows, it must find a new home. And some shells are such desirable residences that hermit crabs will fight to be the one to move in. Anemones might look delicate, but beneath that flower-like exterior is a deadly predator. The anemone's tentacles are armed with microscopic poison-tipped harpoons, which it fires at passing shrimps and fish. This strange-looking fish can both walk and talk. The red gurnard uses its finger-like spines to creep along the seabed and can also make a drumming noise or croak like a frog. 
in shallow, sheltered places, you find meadows of seagrass. These are the perfect hideaway for young fish and crabs. And they're also home to seahorses. These mysterious little fish pair up for life, and each morning, couples greet each other with a special dance. Gravelly places around the UK are a haven for all sorts of interesting sea creatures that make their home amongst the pebbles. This bustling community is home to shrimps, sponges, scallops and much more besides. Sea squirts are animals that go through a radical body makeover. Young sea squirts look a bit like tadpoles and have a fairly sophisticated nervous system. But on reaching adulthood, when they settle on the seabed and turn into a much simpler animal, they no longer need most of that fancy nervous system, and so they digest it. Brittle stars are delicate, spindly cousins of the starfish. To feed, they raise their sticky arms into the water and catch floating particles of food. In tide-swept places, to prevent them being carried away by the currents, they link arms with other brittle stars, forming a giant waving rug on the seabed. Small sharks, and their cousins, the skates and rays, are often found over gravelly seabed, which is a rich hunting ground. It's also a safe place to lay their eggs, attaching them to seaweed, sponges or corals. Each mermaid's purse is home to a baby shark or skate for around nine months as it develops and grows. Rocky places around the UK can rival tropical reefs in their colour and vibrancy. Whether it's pinnacles, ledges, boulders, caves or cliffs, there's always plenty to see. Like most crabs, the female velvet swimming crab can only mate immediately after she has molted her shell, when her new shell is still soft. You often see a male carrying a female around beneath him. Provided he doesn't let her go, he knows he'll be first in line when the time is right. The male corkwing wrasse is the typical modern dad. He decorates the nursery, picking out a safe nook or cranny in the reef and carefully lining it with pieces of seaweed. And once the female has laid her eggs there, he will look after them until they hatch. The pipefish dad goes even further. He's the one that gets pregnant and gives birth to the baby pipefish. But for all those hard-working dads, there's also time for a bit of pampering. They can pop into an underwater beauty salon where small fish pick off their parasites and generally give them a spruce up. You may already know that starfish can regrow lost arms. But stranger still, they can also regrow their stomach. To feed, starfish spit out their stomach and wrap it around their prey while they digest it. And if they get injured in the process, they just leave their stomach behind, creep away and grow a new one. Wherever you go, in the seas all around the UK, there's a mind-boggling array of weird and wonderful wildlife. But very few places in our seas are properly protected 
And as a result, animals like the common dolphin, the common skate, the common eel, and the common seal, all of which, as you can tell from their names, used to be really common, are now in trouble. And some of our marine wildlife is even at risk of becoming extinct in the UK. Right now, we have a unique opportunity to turn it around. The UK government has passed a law saying that by 2012, it will create a network of protected areas, like nature reserves, throughout our seas, from the coast to the depths of the ocean many miles offshore. Some of these protected areas will be places where things like fishing and wind farms also occur, so long as they don't affect the wildlife there. While in others, all fishing and industry will be banned. These protected areas could become havens for wildlife, allowing it to thrive once more. And as the wildlife flourishes in the protected areas, it will overflow into the surrounding sea. Ultimately, if we get it right, this network of wildlife hotspots could help replenish every part of our seas, meaning more wonderful wildlife to enjoy, more fish to catch, and more jobs that depend on the sea, from wildlife tour guides to seafood chefs. And this is where you come in. If the government falters in its commitment to these networks of marine protected areas, we could just end up with a handful of small, barely protected sites, which do little or nothing to restore the health of our ailing seas. To ensure a healthy future for all of our marine life, we need to protect examples of the full range of different habitat types, mud, sand, gravel and rock, around Scotland, Wales, England and Northern Ireland. We need you to get involved, to add your voice to our campaign for living seas. If you visit our website, you'll find out more about living seas and how you can get involved, as well as information to help you explore the UK's marine life. At the Wildlife Trust's 150 coastal nature reserves and visitor centres, and during National Marine Week in August, when we celebrate our amazing sea life at events across the UK. You'll also find out how to join the Wildlife Trust in your area to support the vital conservation projects where you live. Your seas need you, and we have only until 2012 to get it right. If we succeed, if we bring back healthy, thriving seas all around the UK, we will have achieved something quite remarkable, something that our children and our grandchildren will thank us for. So go on, take the plunge and do your bit for living seas. <laughs>